Welcome back fans of all things Disney. Today I have an update to the personal shopping process for all of you. Those of you that are familiar with the channel and maybe you have been a personal shopping customer in the past, there really are not very many uh, changes to anything that I have done in the past, um, but it might be a good refresher for you. For those of you that are new to the channel or maybe you were curious about what I've meant when I said that I was a personal shopper at the Character Warehouse locations, this video will absolutely answer the strong majority of those questions. If there is a question that you still have after watching this though, please don't hesitate to go ahead and put that either in the comments or you are always welcome to send me an email at mickeysmagicaldelivery at gmail.com. One of the main reasons that I did want to go ahead and put this video together now is because I am starting to get very excited with the phase one opening here in Florida to where we should be able to get ourselves back into some of those retail locations relatively soon. Uh, as of today, I, I still don't believe that those are open. Hello, Miss Maja. This is my dog, Maja, for anybody who's wondering. Um, but they were not open as of today. Disney Springs, I know, is not open. We do not have opening dates on any Disney property, as far as I am aware of, as of the filming of this. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see, but it is coming. It'll be here very, very soon. If not this week, then maybe next week. And if not next week, then maybe the week after. So it's a good time to kind of just refresh everybody on the process. Plus, they've also gotten a lot of new subscribers over the last few weeks. And of course, also lots of questions about what the personal shopping process is so that people could maybe place orders if they were interested in doing that. Before I jump into that, as always, we have a monthly giveaway here at the channel. So if you are interested in entering for that, you do have to be a subscriber. Please hit that subscribe button and then make sure that you are commenting on any and all videos that are uploaded over the course of the month so that we can get you some additional entries into the drawing. So first things first, as far as the pers personal shopping goes, you want to make sure that you put a wish list together. Now, if you don't live near the Character Warehouse locations, it's difficult to put a wish list together if you don't know what is there. So the first thing you have to do is to go to YouTube and you want to look up Disney Character Warehouse walkthroughs or just Disney Character Warehouse videos. And what you'll get when you type that in you get a ton of different people that do walkthrough videos to show you not only what is available currently at the Character Warehouse locations, but they will also give you prices and things like that. There are YouTubers that that is one of the main things that they do on their channel is they like to do those walkthroughs because they're very, very popular. Once you identify specific items that you are interested in, then you would just go ahead and put an email together and you're going to send that off to Mickey's Magical Delivery at gmail.com if you would like me to be your personal shopper. Now, one thing I am going to encourage you to do is to check the upload dates for any of those Character Warehouse walkthroughs. Because it is an outlet, the product kind of flies out the door as quickly as it shows up. So you do not want to be looking at something from a year ago and hope that it's still going to be in the outlet. It simply will not be. But maybe a week, maybe two weeks, um, I wouldn't go any more than that because like I said, the product does tend to fly out of the character warehouses and if it's still there, typically those YouTubers are going to at least demonstrate that somewhere in, in their video. So once you have your wish list, you're going to email me at mickeysmagicaldelivery at gmail.com and then you just wait. You wait to see what I am able to find. Now my schedule when school is not in session, uh, I try to go about once a week and it depends on the day. It depends on what I'm seeing in some of those walkthrough videos. This week I might go on a Tuesday and the next week I might go on a Thursday, but I always publish that on the Facebook page and the Facebook page is Mickey's Magical Delivery. So it's very easy to remember. Remember. During the school year though, I try to go once every other week and that's typically on a Saturday so that I have time to post the haul video and then you have time to get any extras that you might want and then of course I can do my invoices on Sunday through typically Thursday of the following week and then we can get you your items. But my schedule does kind of switch up from time to time. So you're going to want to check out that Facebook page if you're thinking about placing any kind of an order. I will also post a lot of extras onto the Facebook page if um, I have items that got canceled out or if I had somebody that just wasn't able to um, pay for their invoice. 
um, then we'll just go ahead and I'll post any of those items that they may have had in their order to the Facebook page. So really, really check out that Facebook page. Once I shop, then I come home and I do a haul video. And the reason that I do the haul video is not necessarily so that you can see what I was able to find off of your list. It is more to show you what the extras are that I was able to pick up. So for example, if you gave me a list of 10 items, I was only able to find three of your items that particular week because they were either highly sought after or they just were not there at all. I always try to grab a whole bunch of extra items so that if you wanted to grab something from that extra pile, you could easily attach that to your order. Now all of those extras are first come first served. So it's when you're watching the haul video, you wanna send off a quick email to me, mickeysmagicaldelivery at gmail.com to claim those extras for either an existing order or for maybe you didn't have an existing order and you just saw an extra and you really, really would like one to kind of claim an extra, that's, that's perfectly fine. You can do that. After I've done the haul video, then what I have is I have everybody has their own shopping bag. It's a literal Disney shopping bag that I store everybody's items in. And then I start with the PayPal invoices. I do everything through PayPal for um, record keeping primarily, and it seems to be the easiest method of transaction for both for me as well as for you if you are the shopper. So you would get an invoice from PayPal, and like I said earlier, sometimes it takes me several days to try to get through. I have been limiting the number of people that I am shopping for so that I'm able to get through all of the invoices within four or five days usually, um, but during the school year, it takes me that four or five days. Over the summer, it might take me a, a couple of days to get through things because I don't have that other um, responsibility, which of course has to always come first. My primary job always has to kind of take the lead on my time. So once you get your invoice, then all you would have to do is, is you just have to hit pay. And once everything is paid for, if you've decided you wanted me to ship your items, then we'll try to get those in the mail within a day or two. If you've decided you want me to store your items, then everything is just placed in a storage bin that is specifically set aside for you. I have not only these blue bins behind me, but I also have an entire hutch as well as some shelving units filled with different containers that have specific people's items in there. So nobody's items get mixed up, nobody's items get lost, they are well protected if you want me to store, and if you opt for me to store, that storage is free. It's a free service that I provide for people. I do, I do not charge you to store your items. Now, why might you choose to store as opposed to ship? Let's say that I was only able to get you those three items, and they're relatively small, uh, rather than paying the shipping cost, which because I ship priority mail, um, rather than paying the shipping cost just for those three items, if you want to store until I fill uh, a box, I fill either a flat rate box or I fill um, uh, another box, and you want to maximize on your shipping costs, I can store, wait until I shop again, and then you can ship everything all at once. So you're paying for shipping only one time and you're saving a little bit of money that way. A lot of people do that once they are comfortable with my service. If you are not comfortable having me store right away, that's perfectly fine. We ship everything right out to you. But if you want me to store your items, I have no problem doing that. I have stored people's items for a single week in between trips and then shipped after the second trip. I have also stored people's items. I think the record is seven months that I've stored somebody's items. And that, because, that was because they happened to be an international customer. I do not ship internationally. So unfortunately, I'm so sorry or if you're a subscriber that is an international subscriber. I do not ship internationally. And I am so sorry for that, but I was doing that last year and it's just, it's too time consuming for me. If you need a recommendation of a shopper that does ship internationally, I can certainly give you those and I can kind of hook you up with that shopper if that's something that you need. Um, but I do not do the international shipping. However, I do have some international customers where they're coming to Walt Disney World and they want me to store their items and then I just do a resort delivery. 
So that is also another thing that I can do for people is to deliver your items right to your Disney resort. There's a $10 charge for resort delivery, but that is much, much cheaper than any kind of shipping that you're going to see when it's priority mail anyway. Now the noise that you're hearing over there just happened to be my two dogs wrestling, so my apologies if that is distracting. But let's see, we went through making your wish list, sending me the email, giving me time to shop, um, I went through my whole process that I do after that. So now it looks like we are to the costs associated with using me as a personal shopper. There are so many personal shoppers out there and many of us follow the same similar price structure, though there are subtle differences here or there. It is vitally important that whichever personal shopper you are using, that you feel comfortable with that person because we have to understand who you are, what your wants and wishes might happen to be, and you have to, there is a certain level of trust. I'm trusting you when I'm shopping for you because I'm upfronting all of that money and I am trusting that you are going to follow through on the order and I'm going to get reimbursed. And then you have to trust that I'm, once you pay, that all of your merchandise is going to make it to you safe and sound. So the costs that are associated with my personal shopping service, the first one, obviously the cost of the merchandise. You pay me what I paid for the item. If the item is $9.99, that's what you pay me for. Then you're gonna pay me the, sh um, the tax that's associated with that item. So whatever taxes I paid on the item, you're gonna reimburse me for that cost. For PayPal, I split it with you. So with PayPal fees, they're, they're 30 cents plus 3%, but it's basically, it's 3% of the merchandise cost. So what I ask from the customer is if you cover the PayPal fees on the cost of the merchandise, then I will cover the PayPal fees on the shipping and I cover the PayPal fees obviously on my shopping fee. So we kind of split it that way. It doesn't really equate to too much, but it's just something that you do want to keep in mind. And then next, shipping fees. That's going to be dependent on where you live, the weight of the box, the size of the box. If I'm shipping at all that particular week, I might be storing for you and then you don't have shipping costs at all that week. The shipping cost does not get charged until you are ready to ship your package. So if you are having me store for a week or two or five or 10 or whatever, you may not, you won't be seeing shipping costs until you are ready to ship. Then there's the shopping fee, and my shopping fee is 20% of whatever the merchandise cost is with a minimum shopping fee of $10. So your break-even point on the shopping fee is going to be $50 worth of merchandise. So 20% of $50 is that $10 shopping fee. If you only purchased $40, of merchandise at the character warehouse your shopping fee is still ten dollars if you purchased 45 dollars at the character warehouse it is still ten dollars because the shopping fee is a ten dollar minimum however as soon as you hit that fifty dollar mark then you want to calculate for yourself okay what's well, going to be twenty percent of whatever my merchandise total is so if you are um spending a hundred dollars at the character warehouse your shopping fee will be $20 on top of that. Now, that might seem like it would add up to quite a bit, but you have to keep in mind as well, and when you're watching those walkthrough videos, you will see this. You'll find t-shirts that are normally $35, $40 for 15. You might find um, Dooney and Burke bags that are normally $300 for 150. Um, lounge fly bags that are normally $80 down to $20 or $25. So the discounts on the merchandise at the outlet can be really, really good. So anywhere from say 40% all the way up to 75, 80%. So you just want to kind of keep in mind what is it that you're asking for? Does it make sense for the shopping fee? Would that work for me? The 20% on the merchandise cost is very, very common with personal shoppers. And like I said, some people are different. Some charge 25%, some charge 15%, some might be 23%. It just all depends on the shopper that you want to use. So you really want to make sure that whoever you have selected, that it's a pricing structure that you're 
you're comfortable with and that it's somebody that you are comfortable with, that you feel like you could have a good relationship with. So in terms of cost, that 20% of the merchandise total applies really only to the two character warehouse locations. I will not pick up items in the parks simply because I would need my annual pass to be able to access the parks and I never ever ever want to put my annual pass at risk. And that is something that Disney does monitor. They don't want to see their annual pass holders picking up items in parks for people. It's just it, it's actually against the bylaws in the annual in the annual pass um, contract that you sign and I would never want to put my annual pass at risk. So I won't pick things up in parks, but I will go over to Disney Springs that is a public venue. I will go to Disney resorts. I can go to a Disney resort without needing an annual pass. So if there is something specific at either a resort or at Disney Springs that you are looking for, I can certainly go ahead and I can pick that up for you. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, if I'm going to be shopping for you at Disney Springs or a resort location, so a Disney property, but not in the park and not the outlets, if I'm shopping at any of those other Disney owned properties, you have to keep in mind that you're going to be paying full retail value. Even if you are an annual pass holder, I cannot get your discount for you. If you happen to be um, a DVC member, I cannot get your discount for you. So you're paying full retail price. Sometimes that will be worth it to you. There's the perfect item at Disney Springs. They don't have it on Shop Disney. You just need somebody to pick it up for you. It's worth it. Other times, it doesn't make any sense at all if you have an upcoming trip and it's just a few weeks away, it might be better off to wait for yourself, but only you can make that decision. The other thing I wanted to just make sure that everybody was aware of, if you do ask me to pick up an item for you from say Disney Springs, always check Shop Disney first. Oftentimes, Shop Disney will have the same items that Disney Springs will have um, that you can purchase online, maybe get free shipping. If you're a Visa card holder, you can get your 10% off. You can potentially get them cheaper online than I can get them for you if I go to Disney Springs or to the resort and pick them up myself. Other times it's not the case. You can only get them on Disney property at Disney Springs or something like that, but it just, it's item specific. Now, if you ask me to pick up an item for you at Disney Springs or at the resorts, I am not going to ask for a 20% shopping fee because you're not only paying regular retail, but there is still a shopping fee associated. Um, what I ask for at those locations is a 10% of the merchandise cost. So if it's a $100 item, you would give me a $10 shopping fee for going and getting and, and dealing with all of the hubbub that goes with Disney and all of that lovely loveliness. Um, but so it would be a 10% shopping fee if it's something at say Disney Springs or at the resorts with a minimum, minimum shopping fee of $5. So if I'm at the outlets, it's a 20% merchandise total shopping fee. Um, with a minimum shopping fee of $10. If I'm going over to Disney Springs for you, it is a 10% shopping fee with a minimum of a $5 charge. Now, most people don't ask to go to Disney Springs or to the resort, so that's really going to be very specific to only a handful of you. Um, and I will always try to remind you of that pricing structure, but since it's a little, it's less than what I would normally charge if I were shopping for you at the outlets, I would hope that it might be a pleasant surprise if you happen to forget that. Now, there is another location that I am going to be adding to my personal shopping service, and I'm so excited for this location. Um, over this period of time of social distancing, I have really rediscovered my love of pins, of Disney pins. I had fallen out of it for a little bit and then I got myself right back into it. So in addition to the character warehouse locations and Disney Springs and different Disney resorts, I'm also adding something to the personal shopping service and I'm very excited about this. I can't believe that I didn't know that this store was in existence, but now that I know, I'm going to be a, a frequent customer of theirs, I am sure of it. Booster Packs and Beyond is a small store that is located in a flea market near Walt Disney World. And one of the things that they specialize in 
our Disney pins. I am so excited to check out the wide variety of things that I have seen that they have on some of the different YouTube videos that are out there. So if you're just hearing about Booster Packs and Beyond for the first time in this video and you are a huge Disney pin fanatic like I am, you may wanna check it out. Corey Fiasco has some great walkthrough videos. It'll give you a nice sense of kind of what they have available. But I'm going to start going there as part of my shopping trips. Maybe it won't be every week, but I can guarantee I'm gonna be going there a couple of times a month over the summer at least, just for myself. So I'm gonna be adding that to my personal shopping service. If there is anybody out there that needed me to look for a specific pin, maybe it's the Mulan Pin Trader Delight pin, or it's um, a Baymax Disney Studios or a Hollywood pin, or maybe it is just, you know, the hot air balloon pin that's got Simba on it. Whatever it might happen to be that you're looking for for your collection, and when you watch the video, you will see the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pins that they have available, all organized either by character or up on the wall. I mean, it's it is a sight to see. So I'm looking very forward to checking this place out. And since I'm going to be adding it into my personal shopping service, um, because it is not a discounted location, these are gonna be retail prices that you're paying. Yes, it's in a flea market, but they also still have to make a profit on what they are selling, and it's not an outlet location. Um, because it is that type of a store, very much like if I were shopping at Disney Springs, that'll be the pricing structure for anything I purchase for you at Booster Packs and beyond. So it would be the 10% of whatever the merchandise cost was with a minimum shopping fee of $5. So if you are only looking for one small little Zoom Zoom pin, it might not make a lot of sense for you to pay a $5 shopping fee on top of that. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense. So I could, I could work with you if it's one little thing like that and I'm gonna be going there anyway. But let's say that you have four different pins that you're looking for and they come up to $100 in the retail price at Booster Packs and Beyond. What you would pay is you would pay that $10 um, shopping fee because it's a 10% if you're only getting $50 worth of pins at booster packs and beyond then it's only the $5 and again what I will do is if people are asking me for specific things at some of these locations that are not the outlets I will try to remind you of that pricing structure just to make sure that there are no surprises when I do purchase your items and I get them home and you get your invoices so that's it in a nutshell if you have never used a personal shopper before but you've always been somewhat intrigued by it or maybe you see something in one of those walkthrough videos at the outlets that you're really interested in if you would like me to shop for you please just send me an email at mickey's magical delivery at gmail.com so hopefully I was able to answer um, any of the questions that you have about the personal shopping process. Like I said, there are many, many, many people in this general area that do personal shopping. Many of them do it as a full-time job. This is a part-time job for me. It's just something fun that I like to do. I actually love, love, love shopping. I, I enjoy going to the, to the stores. I love looking at the new items. Um, I can... I can really appreciate when it's a sought after item and I'm able to get it for somebody. There is no greater joy for me than being able to get something that somebody was looking for and being able to get that to them. So uh, I really do enjoy this, but again, it is a part-time thing for me. I go, when I go on a shopping trip, it's a, it's a one and done in that week where some of the other shoppers are stopping in multiple times a day or every day or something like that. But if the way that I do things, if my process works for you and you are looking for a shopper, I would be more than happy to be that person for you. Hopefully, again, I was able to answer your questions, but if not, feel free to put your questions in the comments below or send me an email at Mickey's Magical Delivery and I will get back to you as quickly as possible. So until our next video, bye-bye.